to Brian's Beat. Join the show by calling 508-996-0500. New Bedford's News Talk Station, 1420 WBSM. Top Cat, the most effectual Top Cat, whose intellectual close friends get to call him DC, providing it's with dignity. Top Cat, the indisputable leader of the game. Hour two of Brian's Beat. I'm Brian. Glad to have you here on a day that is still very humid, starting out, you know, early in the mid 70s, which isn't bad when you think about temperature. But when you tack on the the thick humidity, well, then all of a sudden you get some pretty rotten air quality. Good day to go to the beach if you have the time and an inclination. So I uh, briefly brought up. The um, the idea of a four day school week, and a lot of people think, well, "Where's that coming from?" Well, I think it's an offshoot of the four day work week. Does it work for everybody? No, but you know what? One of the one of the ingenious things about our country from the Declaration of Independence to where we are today is not one size fits all. And so when you look at some homeschoolers, remote schoolers, some of them are only going three or four days a week. And they get everything accomplished. One of the things I really do like about homeschooling is that you don't have to worry about homework because you are already home. All right. Some pros to the four-day school week. According to those in Texas and Colorado, where uh, the two states where this is most popular, they are seeing better test scores. Now, you know, I yeah, I hear you. Do we really want to be teaching to the test? No, but they are seeing better test scores. They're also seeing fewer discipline problems. I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that you're, you're either off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Fewer discipline problems, probably because the kids are spending a little bit more time with mom and dad, mom or dad. It is certainly an excellent employment perk. If you are a school district that's having a hard time bringing in teachers, teacher assistants, janitors in a drum, whatever the case may be, you tell them it's a, only a four-day work week, I'll tell you, more people are going to go flock. And as far as students are concerned, you're getting pretty much the same amount of class hours. You're just doing it in four days instead of doing it in five days. You also save money on bus trips. One of the largest expense schools have are with transportation. Can you imagine what it would be like? Is it a king's ransom savings? No. But if you look at a city like New Bedford, you're talking uh, a couple of nice shablina. But you're saving yourself a a heck of a lot of money. We have a guest coming up in a little bit. I'm going to take a call before we go down that particular road. So let me say hello. Hi, Bri. Hi, Bri. How are you today? Bri is. You are. That's right. That's good to know. Better than you're not. Well, I don't know. Depends on how I sit. If you're not, not, (laughs) maybe having to go to a church service or something. Oh, no. Uh, No, uh, you're not doing that to me. (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> no, I want to hear all about your, your health from your, your doctor there. Oh, he's coming up. Um, I know. Um, I think it's interesting that the uh, 
um, school hours and days. You know, obviously we're connected to work hours and days in, in the U.S., um, which is cultural, which goes back to the, um, a lot of it goes back to farming and goes back to um, getting people prepared to go work in factories. Um, and I was, um, I work in, work with a lot of Europeans over the years, and, um, and the thing that always struck me was that um, they have a 35-hour work week in Europe, which you know it's you know we have a 40-hour-ish work week, but most Mer- most Americans work longer than 40. Um, but they also have um, a lot of countries: uh, France, Germany, Austria, Italy. They they have the like the month of August off. It's like a federal holiday, uh, or it's a um, implied um, vacation because they kind of look at the human condition more holistically and say, you know, like the French, you know, seven course meal, you know, you need to eat, uh, in a certain way that's uh, conducive to your body. You need to have a certain amount of rest and a certain amount of time off, which is conducive to your spirit and everything else, you know, and we don't, we don't have anything like that here. Um, you earn a vacation, uh, or whatever, um, but they still have their own vacations. So they have two week or three week vacations for their companies, but they also have the month of August off. And I always think, man, how recharged you could be if you had, you know, a serious amount of time off without having to, you know, without penalty, without uh, um, concern, you know. Um, so you bring up yeah. an, an interesting point because I don't know if you notice uh, the great and general court, the legislature here in the Commonwealth, they take August off. Congress mm-hmm. takes August off. Supreme Court takes August. In, in fact, Supreme Court, except for emergency uh, type hearings, they're off uh, once all the uh, announcements are made in, at the end of June until October. So, right. I, I mean, there are factions within our government that do the exact same thing. But in the private sector, it ain't like that. No, but and in the private sector, that may be the reason why the United States is, you know, has an edge on productivity and an edge on creativity um, because we our nose to the grindstone kind of uh, culture. Um, but I don't think that if we backed off to have that sort of August off, you know, um, you know, as a generalized holiday, it would not be a bad thing for a lot of people. It would be it would regenerate the batteries. And so think about it. Are you, if, if the grocery stores are closed, what are you going to do? The gas well, stations not. are closed. They're, what are you going to do? Well, they're not over there that they, 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 uh, for general services, they, um, they will change up. Uh, well, look, grocery stores are interesting. I'll just, and I'll leave you with that is like in Germany, um, grocery stores close at like noon on Saturday and then they close Sunday and they, I, then they open Monday again. So people have to get their shopping done Friday or Saturday morning or it's over. You know, you can't get into a grocery store and we, we do, you know, we have 24 hour stores here. We have 24 hour gas here. They don't do that there. They, they do shut it down, you know, on a, a weekly basis. I mean, it's, it, you, you know, if it's noon and you're this and you don't have your groceries, you're kind of done. Um, uh, look, I, I get that. But, you know, one of the things I like about our system is if you drive around, you'll find something open. I'm going to leave oh, you at yeah. that because I, I got to get to our guests and I got to get to yeah. a break. But thanks I for the call. So. 508-996-0500. That's how you do it. Who's there? Welcome back to Brian's Beat. If you follow this program, then you may recall back in March, mid-March, I made an announcement on this show that I found out earlier that particular week that I came down with diabetes. Uh, I was experiencing some problems and woman friend said, you know, have you ever had diabetes? And I said, no. Because you're drinking an awful lot of water and you're, and you're going to the bathroom a lot. So I said, I don't have diabetes. But I decided, you know, why not at least get tested? And I was going in the following week for routine blood testing anyway. And so I called my doctor's office, my primary care's office, to see if they would throw in a, a check for diabetes. I went in on a Tuesday. The the date was actually Tuesday, March 14th. That afternoon, I got a phone call from my primary care doctor. What are you doing? What's wrong? And he told me that I had 
a, a blood sugar reading of 540. Now, honestly, I wouldn't know 540 from 1,000, 20, 40, or, or 20. I, 540 was a number. But apparently it was a very high number. And he said, well, you got to come in. We got to do something about this. It, it should not have been that high. Fast forward about 10 minutes. Same primary care doctor calls me back up and says, you need to go to the hospital. I said, why? He goes, you're, you're, you're at uh, some situation where uh, they need to treat you right now. And I'm saying, I'm, I don't feel that bad. I'll just come into your office tomorrow. And he goes, well, we're going to have a protocol for insulin and whatnot. And I'm thinking to myself, you've got me on so many medications the way it is. I don't think I want to go down that particular road. So I picked up the phone and I placed a call to Dr. Scott Whitaker. He is someone I interviewed back in the early 2000s after he came out with a book called Medicines. Dr. Whitaker is a naturopathic doctor and he also has many videos. He has been recorded in videos. I don't want to make it sound like they're his videos. Uh, but videos where he has made claims in reference to diabetes. And I said, well, if this is true, I I should talk to this guy about working with me. And so, well, you know, I could keep on talking, but at this particular time, what I'd like to do is bring in Dr. Scott Whitaker. Dr. Whitaker, good morning. Welcome to Brian's Beat. Hey, how you doing? I am doing much, much better. Um, just to add on, after that 540, the next day I found out that my A1C was 14.6. You know A1C, you know blood sugar. Is that high, low, medium, rare? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's when you look at their uh, methods of uh, testing and and all their little numbers and stuff, and they give them to you and the purpose of it is to make you scared and 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 freak out, and then you get on all those medications that they line up for you at the, at the at the pharmacy, and you come away with a bag like you went to grocery shopping. <laughs> so, uh, how did you know? <laughs> yeah, that's how the, that's the, how the whole system works. It's based on fear, F E A R, which which means false evidence appearing real, and uh, it works perfectly. I mean, you know, the last three years has been nothing but a whole game of fear. Uh, and uh, it, it worked for those who went and uh, allowed themselves to be used as a pin cushion. Well, I did not want to. First of all, when I went in there, I, I was actually toying. And, and you said, look, it is up to you. But if it were me, I wouldn't take it. I, I can put you on a protocol Da 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 da, uh, but ex- and you told me what to expect them to do, and and almost to the letter, that is what my primary care doctor wanted me to do, and you should have seen their face when I said no, I'm not going to take the insulin if if you're not going to cut some of these other medications out. No, no, we're not going to change it. Either. I'm not going to take it, and um, that's the way it went. I have to admit. So now I'm thinking I'm not going to take the insulin. I'm going to listen to this other person who's a naturopathic doctor. What if it doesn't work with what you're saying? I'm sure you hear that a lot. Right. Most of the time with uh, some people with extreme conditions like, uh, you know, diabetes is, is extreme. But in terms of those that went through process of radiation and chemotherapy uh, dealing with uh, cancer after being beaten down for six months to a year and have no hair and and all the other things that come with that stuff and then they come you know to me or another another natural healer and say you know please save me please help me and will it work I said well and right now, at this time in your life, what other uh, app will you take? So either you, you jump on board and ride with us or you 
and stay where you are on that boat and uh, prepare yourself for the outcome. We're talking to Dr. Scott Whitaker. He is my naturopathic doctor. And uh, you put me on a a pretty strict, uh, I guess we can call it diet uh, lifestyle change. And um, I guess there's something about insulin and blood sugar uh, that um, I guess the pancreas is involved. And apparently the pancreas wasn't working correctly. Is Am I getting that right? Uh, yes, the overconsumption of refined processed foods, particularly of the uh, carbohydrate family, we should say, the breads, the pasta, refined rice, uh, cereals, um, um, pancake, waffle, all that stuff, you know, uh, at, a, at a high rate of eating. Uh, all those grains, we call those grains, unprocessed grains, and um, uh, once they are in the body and converted, the body converts them to sugar. So uh, the pancreas says, my God, what is all this sugar coming in the body? Let me go on and release some insulin to bring the blood sugar down. And the way that the body works on the insulin is that it needs the mineral chromium and if there's no chromium in the body then the uh, insulin is released but it won't lower the blood sugar because the chromium allows the insulin to go into the cells and that that causes the the lowering effect of the uh, insulin so then you have all this insulin being released into the system it's not going into the cell and what happens you start to develop insulin resistance uh, within the body and when that starts and that's when that diabetes kicks in neuropathy and everything else that comes with it is very dangerous because uh, you got you got sugar just you know going through the system not being checked and it's, it's weakening your immune system uh, if you have candida anywhere in the body which most people do if they've had antibiotics uh, it's, it's starting to set the stage for cancer. And uh, all cancer comes from is fungus. And uh, so it's, it's a serious issue. And that's why we uh, we remove the grains from the, from the diet during that, during that period. So therefore, there's no uh, uh, way that we can have this excess sugar in the body and basically dealing with proteins, and uh, vegetables. The only fruit that is allowed during that period are the berries, you know, strawberry, blueberry, uh, cranberry. The reason why we use the berries is because they're very, very low in sugar. And uh, so then we bring the chromium into the body, uh, supplemental wise, and uh, things start to change. Change within six weeks, really. And uh, if the person is consistent and disciplined, problem solved. Very simple. You know, it, it, as difficult as it was to get used to it, and I think you were probably tired of me saying, well, well can I do this? Can I do that? Um, it is pretty simple. It, it, I, you need a mindset in order to move in this direction. But uh, you're, you're correct. Uh, my vision started getting a little blurry when I... I had the onset of the of the high blood sugar, but as I started going on this regimen that you put me on, the vision got better. The um, blood sugar numbers went from the five forties down to the mid forties, down to the three hundred, and by the end of one full week, I was down in the one hundreds. And even my primary care doctor was saying, "Well, you don't need to." Um, to um, test your sugars four times a day anymore, just one time a day. And then we got down to where I am right now, where I'm only testing four times a week. And um, to me, that that is a huge difference. Huge, and I, 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 I can only thank you for, for coming up with the protocol. Well, uh, you know, the, the trader uh, allowed me to study this part of uh, creation and 
just you know, I just just put one one and one to the hey. I I don't want to take any claim for it, so I got just uh, I just say I'm glad I, I was able to help. Well, I I appreciate it. So. I guess what I had is what they call type 2 diabetes. Are those the only kind of diabetes that can be treated? Uh, there are folks that were born diabetic or somehow in life became a, a type 1 diabetic. Or uh, as some people I know, they were maybe in their teens and they came down with diabetes. And sometimes it's high blood sugar. Sometimes it's too low blood sugar. Can you treat people like that? Yeah, we help uh, people on any, any level, type 1, type 2. Uh, type 2 is the easiest, of course. Uh, uh, type 1 is where their uh, pancreas is no longer producing insulin because it's been damaged. And uh, we have to go and add some extra help there to the, to the uh, protocol to... Uh, they call beta cells is what is what's been damaged, and there's some herbs there that actually uh, increase beta cells. So we use those along with the chromium, same diet protocol, and uh, it won't take it'll take a little longer than six weeks, but we, you know we'll get there. But um, you know the damage starts actually from the hepatitis uh, uh, vaccine from uh, childhood. A type one diabetes. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll take so, your word for it. You you uh, have studied this for the longest of time. How come we don't hear anything about that? I mean, well, it might make somebody think twice before they get that kind of vaccine. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's the hepatitis B, which you know. Why on earth do they even give that to babies anyway? Because hepatitis B is is transmitted through sex. So what the hell they got to do with a baby? Um, but uh, they they won't tell you about it, or we won't hear about it because that interferes with with the cash flow. Uh, mm-hmm. You know they you mess up their system if we start giving up information. So that's why a lot of stuff now today is suppressed. Uh, there's a lot of censoring. Uh, I mean, it, it, you, any any commercial you see now on, on 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 their stations is all funded by pharmaceutical. Pfizer being the main one. Uh, certainly, if you look at the CNNs and the and the uh, TV lands and and uh, Fox News, uh, they, they they all of them. Are, are yeah. funded by pharmaceutical companies and and many radio stations. Uh, our station here, we play quite a few pharmacy oriented uh, commercials, pharmaceutical oriented commercials. I mean, they, they pay oh, the bills, yeah. you know. Pay the bills, and they keep keep information suppressed, and uh, you'll never hear anything positive about natural medicine. Only negative. And that's that's on purpose. Mm. Uh, that, that's their system. That's how they run it, and that's why we stay out of it. Doctor Whitaker, uh, Doctor Scott Whitaker is our guest today, naturopathic doctor, doctor who uh, has worked very well with me and my diabetes. I uh, you talked about the food protocol, basically a lot of vegetables and protein. One thing you did mention is uh, many of the vegetables needed to be organic. And within the, the meat category, uh, pasture-raised and organic. Now, for some of us, uh, finding both pasture and organic is a, is a very difficult road to go down. In fact, in, here in Massachusetts, I haven't been able to find any like that. I'm, I'm sure they're out there. Uh, but um, in all the searching that I've done, and a few other people have done it with me, we haven't been able to find all of that. Yeah, it's a, a little task. You got to do 
do a little research, find out where your local farmer markets are. And um, there's a couple of groups called the Weston Price Foundation, and they get together, I think, monthly. And they they would let you know who in that area, in that state, is producing the grass-fed meats and the, and the organic vegetables. And they set up a co-op. You can go pick it up. Um, what are they uh, called? Uh, the Weston Price Foundation. Weston Price Foundation. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Very, very powerful and uh, useful and loads of information. Why is organic so important? Well, it, it's the, now as, as we progress. Uh, Yearly, the word organic actually has been abused and misused and uh, doesn't mean what it used to back in the day. Um, now, you, what you're looking for now is that it's organic plus non-GMO because you can now be organic and still be genetically modified. Yeah, how tricky they are. But uh, it's important because you don't want to be consuming uh, products that have been created in a laboratory made from synthetic uh, compounds, uh, which just, which cause numerous side effects in the body. Uh, you don't want to be consuming pesticides that destroy your, your stomach lining and gut and your digestive problems, of course, leading to cancer. So this is the, uh, the reason why we, we search out for organic non-GMO foods. So if I look in my regular grocery store, I can see the organic section, but I, I need to read that label a little bit more carefully for non-GMO. Uh, speaking of that, I when I asked you a couple of weeks ago if I could add a little bit more fruit to uh, my, my lifestyle now, you said cherries and grapes with seeds. Do they have to be organic? Because, quite frankly, uh, I haven't been able to find any grapes without seeds. Cherries uh, I have seeds in them, but I can't find any organic. Yeah, yeah, they have them. They're usually eight ninety nine a pound, and regular cherries are three ninety nine a pound. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's the other unfortunate thing is that the price is so high on them, but. If you can't find the organic ones, you got to take the regular ones. You need to soak them in hydrogen peroxide for at least ten minutes because they got sprays on them. But the uh, chair, the uh, grapes, uh, only grapes I've seen that have seeds that are still on the market is called the muscadine, and uh, those grow in the south. But outside of that, you have to leave them alone. Cause they're wondering or thinking, how do you grow fruits without without seeds? Especially so, organic uh, ones. Yeah, so that's my point. They'll say organic grapes, but they're seedless. How 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 that's that's still GMO. It yeah. doesn't have sprays on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I, you, I they, they, a, they'll catch you one way or the other. I just bought a seeded watermelon the other day. I was so happy. Find watermelon has seeds in it. You know, I I, I think about oranges too. Uh, oranges uh, now that you get seedless oranges, seedless grapefruit. Um, I never thought of the fact that they were GMO products. But how? What else could they be? Hey, you can show me how you grow it. You if you. <laughs> You no, know, you could take back in the day when I was growing up. You could take the seeds from the fruits, nectarines, peaches, and apricots, plant them in the ground, and a little tree to start growing. <laughs> so if I got a seedless fruit, uh, how am I be able to start my tree? <laughs> it, it, there you go. Maybe that's part of the plan. They don't want you to grow. I, I hear one of those uh, companies, not Archer Daniel Midlands, but the um, uh, another big growers is hoarding. All the seeds. I don't know how uh, true Monsanto. all of that is. Monsanto, thank you. They are. 
They yeah. are hoarding. Well, the farmers, you know, farmers in India are committing suicide. You know, India is one of the largest, one of the largest food producers in the world, and the farmers are being told you have to use these uh, Terminator seeds from Monsanto. And what they do is they grow, it grows a harvest, and then after their first harvest, uh, it doesn't have any uh, seeds for them to, you know, use the following year. And they have to go back to Monsanto and buy seeds again. The farmers, they commit suicide. They say, I'm not doing this. <laughs> Are they really committing suicide? Oh, yeah. High rates because you're affecting the ecological system. You know, this is food that's been growing for thousands of years. And they, they, a certain way, they know how to harvest and take the seeds from what they've grown, save them for the year, put them back into the system. And now you tell them they got to go spend thousand uh, dollars for a bag of seeds and that don't even produce only one year. Yeah, it's big. It's big, big wow. uh, serious over there. So, um, going to bring this full circle. My A one C was fourteen point six. June fourteenth, three months later, I went in for another test and it came back six point one. Um, my primary care doctor was jumping up and down. I was trying to, you know, I was very happy about it, but to me, this is, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Three months is only three months to you. Um, going from 14.6 to a 6.1, is that average? Is that an exception to the rule? Is that not low enough? Um, uh, well, I don't even know what, what level they wanted at. Um, you know, they have their little graphs and bars. You say you jump it up and down. What, 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 has it got lower or what? So, um, maybe I didn't mention this to you, but when I called the doctor's office after, uh, being told of, about the 6.1, I said, well, if I went on the insulin like you wanted me to do, how low would I have come out three months after? And he said, probably in the eights. And, you know, he was he's so ecstatic that I was able to get it down to 6.1. You know, he was jumping up and down. He was telling the medical assistant, uh, I can't believe what we have here. It's, it's like I'm going to be part of a, a medical journal. And I thought to myself, well, you've been doing this for, you know, some time. So that's why I'm asking you, um, what is, am, am I the exception to the rule or am I the rule? Oh, you're the rule. Um, you know, everyone's, you know, I work with men who have PSA scores and come in at 100 and, uh, PSA score needs to be under one. And we get it there in about three months and, you know, same reaction from their position. So, uh... How did you do it? I can't believe it. Yeah, how do you do it? How do you do it without taking the drugs and getting your prostate cut out? And so, that is is that part of it? You you were trained a different way. Um, those that would read your book, uh, Medicines, they, they would find out that as a child, your, your father had you uh, taking a lot of uh, vitamins and herbs and and well, what do we call the other minerals? Um, but today's doctors have been trained by other doctors who have been trained as, you know, push the pills, push the pills. This is that's all they know. Yeah, that's all they know. They don't know anything about nutrition. So to, so to go to them asking about vitamins and minerals is it's like talking to a wall. Um, they don't they don't know. They don't care. They think the food has no relation whatsoever with uh, health and disease at all. Period. And, uh, so they don't believe the in gar- garbage in, garbage out. No, I mean, I'm sure when you went and got your, uh, they were lining you up for your stuff. They even mentioned about diet. Well, I was told to cut the carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. All right, but. There was and and I'm yeah they gave me some pamphlets they were always uh, trying to hook me up with an incro somebodyologist and I I you know I'm just I'm tired of seeing doctors I'm tired of seeing doctors 
No offense to you. You know how that works. Everybody gets a piece of you because uh, you know they need to get paid, and uh, they just pass you around like a prostitute. You know, I feel that way. I feel that I'm lining somebody's uh, next vacation up and, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm keeping all the uh, assistants to the assistants to the receptionist employed. 100%. Uh, the medical paying, industry has for, changed drastically. You're paying for Sally Sue to uh, go to college. <laughs> I don't know Sally Sue, but probably. You want to take a call? No problem. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. Good morning. You're on with Doctor Whitaker. Yeah. Good morning, uh, hey, Brian. Thank you for inviting the doctor, and thank you, Doctor Whitaker, for coming on thank the you. radio station. Thank you. Are you there? Yes, he's listening. He said oh, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, because I didn't. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, are you familiar with uh, Doctor Ted Brower out of Tallahassee, Florida? No, sir. He's also, uh, he tries to uh, treat people naturally. Uh, he got his, uh, I heard him on a radio interview. He's uh, Dr. Ted Brower, medical degree at uh, Florida State. And he's doing the same thing that you're doing. And uh, he said there was a gentleman that came in uh, to his office with a paper bag with 20 different types of pills. And he told him, first of all, the first thing you got to do is change your eating habits. And number two, uh, he told him a different uh, 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 herbs uh, that you should take, natural. And uh, the thing he went on to say, too, in these uh, med schools today, you got big farmer in the med schools. Uh, they're there when they do the internship, and uh, they line them up, all these students, so when they get into practice, they're going to uh, prescribe their, their pills. Do you have a question? They, uh, no, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, I'm bringing that as, a, uh, and it, uh, if the doctor's aware of that, these bigger pharma become more of a presence in medical schools so they can push these uh, these pills because the natural herbs doesn't make money for big big pharma. They have to have everything patented. They use, uh, they, they make the pills, they mimic uh, what uh, the natural herbs are uh, so they can make money. And uh, obviously, Dr. Ted Bro says it has an adverse effect on your body because of the toxins in your liver and your kidneys. Uh, but one last thing, if I may, uh, doctor, is uh, I try to buy Purdue chicken because there's no hormones, but Tyson says they're going to go back to giving hormones to their, their chicken. So the, when you go to the store, can you, can you explain to us the dangers of all these hormones in, in, uh, in the meats? And I'll hang up and I'll let you answer uh, that question. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. Dr. Whitaker? Yes, yes. So the gentleman was uh, was correct about the uh, pharmaceuticals in, in the bed with the uh, med schools because all the med schools were taken over in the early 1900s by Rockefeller money. And that's when it came uh, in the curriculum that you had to start using drug medicine. And so it started way back, way back then, just... It's now today people are realizing it. So, but regarding the hormones, uh, with they, they are basically growth hormones. So it takes the chicken from zero to twenty-eight, uh, the full growth uh, in twenty-eight days. That's why they, they're so big and huge. Uh, uh, they call them creatures now, not really chickens. Creatures. But, uh, oh yeah, that's what KFC. You know, that's why they couldn't say. That's why they can't say Kentucky Fried Chicken as their as their wording as to say KFC because it's not chicken anymore. Um, oh man! Um, but yeah, these hormones uh, when you ingest them from the foods, uh, and of course they cause the chicken to grow from zero to twenty eight full growth uh, inside your body is causing your organs to uh, and and stimulate cell growth overgrowth or well, overgrowth of cells is it's cancer. So, uh, you know, they, you see, you see some of our children now, uh, they're going vertically in growth. They're going horizontal. Uh, you see in the men, uh, growing breasts now, 
and, and, and then it affects the women, oh, big time, like little, little, the little girls starting their cycles, six and seven years old. This is from the hormones. Wow. 508-996-0500. Good morning. You're on with Dr. Whitaker. Hello, doctor. I'd like to know, what is the opposite if you have low blood sugar? Are you treated the same way, low carbohydrates? Uh, with low blood sugar, what we do is uh, we aim, we just we, we keep it the same uh, diet dietary protocol, the proteins and vegetables. We add more uh, essential fatty acids, O3, what we call O3 essential fatty acids, and therefore the uh, the pancreas is allowed to uh, increase its own insulin based on the consumption of the fatty acids in the body. Therefore, when it does rise, it won't be spiked. It'll be a slow process. Fats and proteins are very good for lowering and raising blood sugar. Fats and proteins. Very good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your call. Uh, just a couple of questions for you, Dr. Whitaker, before I let you go. Uh, basically pertaining to yours truly. That would be, um, am I, can I start going to restaurants again now? I, I, my blood sugar is in the 80s and 90s. My A1C is 6.1. Um, can, can I lax a little uh, as long as I keep some type of uh, balance knowing that I can't overdo it? Oh, yeah, you can go to restaurants. You just got to, you know, be selective uh, with the ones you choose. You know, kind of, you almost got to research them and uh, find out. Um, you know, they use GMO meats. Uh, they, you know, are they spraying everything? Um, do they use butter or do they use margarine? Uh, so, I you know, you, you probably, your higher end restaurants, you, you know, you, You'll probably see a higher selection of food, foods, um, and then uh, your lower end restaurants. You know, well, as they say, you get what you pay for. Um, so you, get, you just gotta be careful. You gotta be selective. You know, I travel a lot when I speak, and before I go, I'm always I already have my list of the restaurants that I'm probably going to be attending because since I'm on the road, and I've already done my research on them. I already know what kind of meats, what kind of Foods they they you know they putting on the on the menu. I'm I'm ready to go. I'm not getting there to the city and oh, oh where am I going now? I already have it figured out. Well, that you know again that's just a little planning like you do uh, when you go to the grocery store. You have a list. I, I that makes right. sense. Um, so if I do the cherries and they are not organic, then I need to wash and rinse them. And hydrogen peroxide, is there any kind of, you know, three to one, two to one? No, just get a bowl and throw them in there. Uh, we take about maybe a half a cup of hydrogen, pour it in there, and then just pour the water to fill it up to cover the cherries. And that's it. Just let them sit 10 minutes and uh, enjoy. I bought a bag yesterday. I'm about to get down today. <laughs> and then, and the same with the grapes. Season, I eat, I eat probably two pounds a day. Same with the grapes. Uh, when the muscadines get in, they come in about August. Yeah, I'll probably eat about a pound a day. Okay. And last question uh, for you: a couple of one, I want you to give out contact information in case people would like to follow up with you. But um, so. You, you've done an excellent job with the diabetes. So now I want to wrestle with high blood pressure or um, failing kidneys. Which, you know, would you say I should work on next? Uh, we work on the kidneys. Because the kidneys are, are directly related with high blood pressure. So... Uh you know, deal with the kidneys, and then that takes care of high blood pressure automatically. 
work with the kidneys and that will clear. You see, most doctors tell you work with the high blood pressure to make the kidneys better. You're saying just the opposite. Yes. Because most doctors, uh, you know, they only work with symptoms. They don't, they don't deal with the, the cause. The cause of the kidneys is the problem. Kidneys are not filtering properly. Uh, think of your kidneys like you would a, uh, your car, with the filter, oil filter, oil filter, you know, you have to change it every three, three to 5,000 miles. So if you went on 20,000 miles, all of a sudden, uh, you'll start having some issues with the engine. Things start getting clogged up because you need a new filter. Well, the kidneys are the same way. If you don't, uh, address the kidneys and what they need and flushing them and keep staying hydrated, then the kidneys are going to get clogged. When that clogs, then it's going to build up pressure. And the pressure is your blood pressure. And that's where it comes from. Gotcha. Dr. Whitaker, uh, real quick, how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can email me. Dr. Whitaker at hotmail.com. Dr. Whitaker at hotmail.com. D-R period Whitaker. W H I T A K E R at hotmail dot com. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, mm-hmm. well, I really you. appreciate it. Appreciate you. We'll talk to you yes, soon. Sir. Dr. Scott Whitaker joining us on the program today. You can hear the interview with Dr. Whitaker on the Brian's Beat podcast. 